From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Today, friends, because we're beginning of the new year, we are going to do something that we try to do once a year just before we go into it. And that is the review of the past year. So much has happened around the world, and we need to be reminded of all of this fresh in our minds as we go into the new year and pray that God will prevent some of these things from happening. The first one, global Islamic State attacks on alarming rise, and we all have to admit that. I've never seen anything rise so quickly as the Islamic State attacks around the world. And then, ISIS calling Paris attacks first of the storm. That's what they said just a few weeks ago. This is only the beginning. Wait till you see what we have planned. And then, no more Christians in Mideast within two years. Friends, that's where it all started. Jesus was born in the Middle East. It all started there, and then his disciples went into all of that area, up to Germany and up into Great Britain, everywhere they went, over into India, and they gave the gospel. That's where it all started. And now, no more Christians in Mideast within two years. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? Well, review of the year, it's a little bit difficult for me because so much has happened on a personal level. And I want to thank all of you for praying. And I'm referring to my husband's illness this year. Jack was almost taken from us. The doctors gave him about a 20% chance of living, as you well remember. But now he is back, and Jack, you are back with uh, full force. In fact, today, when I went uh, to the store, a couple of the ladies said, Oh, Rexella, we can't do without your husband. He's the one telling us what's really happening out there. So it's good to have him back. And everyone, I say thank you, Lord, for bringing you back. It's been a tough year, and I uh, have a wonderful little sweetheart who really took care of me, and she's been taking care of me now at home. Amen. Do you know that I did not eat anything for 135 days because I was fed intravenously? And they even had a two-week course when it was all finished before I could go home to learn how to swallow again. And I'll tell you, Everything she's making now tastes good Whoa. after you eat sawdust for 17 weeks. At, I don't know what comes through those tubes, but I didn't even have a jelly bean. And so it's, it's just wonderful to be back. And you know, I was going to uh, cancel everything. I wasn't going to be in the ministry anymore. You know, people don't realize this, but I am now the age Billy Graham was when he retired. But I came back and I listened to one of my videos, The Great Escape, and I said, Rexella, I have to stick with this until my last breath. I've got to warn America, blow the trumpet, and warn my people, the Bible says in Ezekiel 33, 3. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it everything I have until my last breath because I want three million souls. We are <laughs> two million eight hundred and eighty thousand right now. I've got a little over two hundred thousand to go, and I just heard from Mike Johnson, who runs our prison ministry, and he says since two thousand eight they have won ten thousand three hundred convicts, and they've written me the letters and all oh, uh, how great it is, and they're using my book of Revelation as. College credit, believe it or not, God is really wonderful. We're praising the Lord for everything that's going on. Pray for us, and I'm going to give it everything I've got the next two weeks. Amen. Amen. Amen, Jack. Well, uh, that's a good review of the year. 10,000 prisoners accepting the Lord. I didn't know that until we got this yeah. recent letter, Jack. 
Well, we want to focus on world events and what happened this past year. And of course, the first thing I think coming into most of our minds is the increase of violence. Take a look at this. The New Jihad, a brazen new generation of battle-hardened extremists, has rebelled against al-Qaeda. Can you imagine that, seeing the old guard's leadership as too politically passive and restrained in the use of violence? They're saying, we want more violence. Well, here you see the one who's promoting this, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And oh my word, he's saying he's the head of ISIS exports extreme violence. And then global Islamic State attacks on alarming rise. Now, I want to just say something about this article. 1,000 attacks, nearly 3,000 deaths in just three months. The last three months, that's 42% jump in daily attacks. I have a very serious question to ask Jack right now. And we go by the Bible uh, today talking to these ladies. They say, we've never heard the Bible like this. Your husband enlightens our minds. And I said, well, that's the Lord speaking. The Bible is God speaking as he inspired men of old to write. Well, I want to ask him, does the Bible reveal that in the last days, just before the Lord comes, violence would increase like never before? Oh, I'll tell you, somebody needs to speak up, and God has called me from a deathbed. That's what they said, I had a 20% chance to live, and I'm here, and I'm going to give it all I've got until Jesus calls me home. But we've got too many milk toast ministers. They took a survey and said, will you take a stand on the issues of the day? Will you give them the Word of God, even when it hurts when you preach it? For the hearers, 90% said, no, God forgive you, men. Listen to 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, when they like it. And when they don't like it, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, it's here, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll have to themselves teachers uh, who will tickle their ears, itching ears, the Bible says. I'm not going to do that. My Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, this know also the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godless, but denying the power of now listen to God from such turn away. If your preacher doesn't take a stand on the issues of the Word of God and just tries to tickle ears, and we call him the first church of the deep priest, pastored by Dr. Jack Frost, as I said a couple of weeks ago, get out of there and get into a church that's doing something, because I'm telling you, our time is short. We have a very few days left. I believe that we are the generation that's going home in the rapture. Soon we're going home. When we hear the words, come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and our Savior appears and calls us home in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But then we have to stand before him and give an account of our lives. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait for Jesus to come. Yeah, you're going to give account at that hour for the way you've lived on this earth. And the next verse after the one I just quoted is, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men it's not going to be a picnic. And so God warns us, Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, 
bare not your voice. Lift it up like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. Some of you have never won a soul, and you've got to go home empty-handed. You don't want that. You want to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I'm going to give it all I've got, as I've said a minute ago. <laughs> I'm not going to retire. I want to hear him say, well done, Jack Van Impey. And I'm asking him that for three million before I go home, and I'm at two million eight hundred thousand for all the years of service already. Praise the Lord. All right, Jack, now we're going to be dealing with the violence. Where did it happen? It really happened almost globally, but we're going to start to start in the Middle East. And I'd like you to take up something that happened in Egypt. Airline adds to confusion on crash cause. Now, there were 224 people on board of this plane that was on the way to Russia out of Egypt. Here you see it, grief and confusion. In aftermath of Russian plane crash. Well, they were confused. I'm going to ask Jack, do, do you believe that this was terrorism? What caused the crash? Well, they were really wondering what was it was all about. They thought maybe some guys snuck onto the plane before it took off. And they originally said they found a can, a homemade bomb, as ISIS is teaching their men to make now. And they thought that was probably it, but now they've crossed that off. and that, Still not sure what it is, but I'm going to tell you something. ISIS is the most terrorist group that's ever existed next to the Brotherhood. This moment was so dangerous that the man who was the president was of the Brotherhood, and then the general of the army took over and put him in prison and said to the men who preach in the mosques of Egypt, thousands of them, you're not allowed to speak anymore because you cause all of this trouble and killing, and I'm not going to allow it. He said, before you can get back in your pulpits, I have to approve you. Wow. But ISIS, they don't care what anyone says or does. They're just on the killing uh, streak. And I'm telling you, we are in trouble, and they're going to try to frighten us, or they tried to do two places now, New York City and Los Angeles this week, saying that the schools had bombs on them and it caused all kinds of things. They've uh, told us they're going to the White House, they're going to Rome, to Italy, they're going after the Pope, they're going after everybody. They're a bunch of murderers. Yeah. And I'm glad there's some Islamists who say, we are not going to take this much longer. And even the people of Dearborn here who are Muslims says, we are afraid there's going to be a great backlash. And we now know that there are 300 million guns in American homes. God help us. Next week, I'm going to deal with a man who is one of these leaders of the Islamist movement. And it will be the greatest war in history. In fact, Pope Francis said, it will be World War III and terrible. Oh, yes, Jack. Well, you know, Egypt tried to stop the Brotherhood. You saw what happened. Let's go up to Europe and see what they did. Paris attack was planned in ISIS-controlled territory. 150 people were killed, and so many hundred were wounded. ISIS claims responsibility, calling Paris attacks first of the storm. Deadly Paris attacks reveal next stage of ISIS. At least 140 dead in multiple attacks across Paris. France declares state of emergency and shuts the borders. Remember when that happened? And then Paris plotters have connections in the UK. Well, we're talking about the UK in uh, just a few moments. But let me just ask Jack. Who do you think was behind all of this terror in Paris? Was it ISIS? They claimed that they were, Jack. Now, ISIS is the biggest murderous group of all of them, but they're only the beginning. You also have the jihadists, you have the Taliban, Hamas, Hezbollah, Boko Haram, 
El Sabab. There's no end to it. We are headed for real trouble. And yet Psalm 91 5 says, be not afraid of their terror. And they're going to pay for their murder. You know, right now, Al Qaeda pays them more than any other group. And that's why they're coming from all over Europe to fight for them. And not only that, but they get 72 virgins when they kill. What a God that lets them have lust for all eternity if they kill. But wait, they even get to choose 70 relatives and friends to go to heaven. What a great soul winning plan. We tell them you have to come to Jesus and receive him and get saved. But this is what's going on. You're going to pay for it. The Bible says that judgment day is coming. And Revelation 21 8 says, The fearful and unbelieving and abominable murderers and whoremongers and all idolaters shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone. Revelation 22 15, outside of heaven are dogs, sorcerers, murderers, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You're not going to get away with your sin. We're going to meet God at judgment. And believe me, that's not too far in the future and you'll pay for it, and you'll find out you couldn't get to heaven by killing and getting virgins and taking your family there. You've got to come to Jesus. There's no other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. And Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name but Jesus, whereby we must be saved. Oh, Jack, it's so wonderful, though. You know, it's wonderful to know that even the murderer can be saved if they'll come to Jesus, if they'll come to Jesus. Well, let's go from Europe to the United States, please. And there we know, bloodbath in San Bernardino. And they say, the police chief said, it was as if they were on a mission. Carnage in California. Well, Malik and Farouk, as they pass through U.S. Customs, take a look in 2014. And then, of course, here we see, there they are. They were on a mission. They were ready for it. They planned for it. They wanted it. Even left their six-month-old baby in order to do this. Going on, probe focuses on terror. And of course, we know that it was. They said, no doubt about it, we were on a mission. I'm going to stop here, Jack. And I want to know, this was the worst thing since 9-11 that happened in the United States. And the Islamic terrorism was right there in the United States. Do you think we're going to face more? Rexella, I think we're going to have all of these false alarms like they've just done in New York City and in California. And it's going to cost thousands and millions of dollars of extra things to get all of our police forces out there to try to calm the public down and it's going to lead according to the man I'm going to quote next week one of the leaders of this movement who's changed his mind about it all says I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to kill people and he's warning them that the greatest war they've ever seen in history is coming and it's the one that's recorded in Revelation chapter 9 this is horrible, verses 14 and onward. Loose the four demons of the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, thousand, and that's Muslims and all the other enemies of the world. And by these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, and brimstone. But that's not the worst part. You folks don't realize there's a terrible place called hell. And listen to this. All you murderers are going to end up there. I'm warning you. You're not going to get away with all of this murder and slaughter and beheading and the rest with knives and machetes and everything else. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 41, Depart from me, you curses, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This is for all the murders, all the killers. And listen to this in Luke 16, 23 to 26. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And he sees Father Abraham far off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. 
send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He said, son, it's too late now. And friend, you're not going to get away with your sin. And that day, God shall judge the secrets of men by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jack, I want to say how far they've already gone in Europe. I can't believe this next article you're going to see. Take a look, please. Sharia police free to patrol German streets. You know what? They've given the green light to Sharia police there in Germany to patrol the streets in search of Islamic law violators. If you violate our law, we'll take you. Whoa! Now, in February 2008, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, told a BBC radio interviewer that the United Kingdom needs to face up to the fact that some of the citizens, that is British Muslims do not relate to the British legal system. Therefore, the British legal system needed to, at some point, adopt parts of the Islamic Sharia law, a legal code based on the Quran. It's now emerged that Sharia courts with these powers have been set up, whoa, in London, Birmingham, Bradford, and Manchester with the network's headquarters in New Eden, Warwickshire. Two more courts are being planned for Glasgow and Edinburgh. Let me just say this. I want to ask Jack, Sharia law, they're setting it up in Europe already. Sharia police in Germany, can you believe that one? Jack, just how far are they going to go? What is Sharia law? Oh, and they're controlling four of the major cities of the UK and setting up two more in Scotland and Ireland. It's coming. They're setting them up in Belgium the homeland of my parents. It's just worldwide, but it's going to be stopped. And I make no apology for preaching on hell because Allah said anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will burn in hell forever. So if they can preach it, I can preach it. And I'm going to preach it because you can't get away with your sin forever. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment, the judgment. But I got good news for you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15.1, Paul speaking, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news. What's the good news? Verses 3 and 4, that Christ died for us and was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. And 1 John 1, 7 says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. You don't have to stand before judgment. There's no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. When you come and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I repent of my sin, and I trust you, Jesus, and your shed blood to cleanse me. That moment, all the sins are lifted. That's the good news of the gospel of Christ. Amen. You need to do it. You need to receive this Jesus. Amen, Jack, we do. You know, we could have gone on, friends, and talked about the Iranian uh, agreement and how Russia is delivering defense missiles to Iran and so forth. But it all points to the coming of the Lord. It all points to a battle of Armageddon and how the Lord is coming back to stop all this stuff. He's coming back soon. It could be tomorrow. It could even be today. And as Jack said, we need to be ready. Will you open your heart to the Lord? Will you accept him? Only Jesus can forgive our sins. Jack, would you pray that wonderful prayer of accepting Jesus as our Savior? Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for all the agony you endured that day as you died for my sin. I should have been lost forever. I should have faced the eternal judgment in a place called hell. But you died for me. You took that judgment on your own body for me, for all of us. And I'm asking everyone that's listening now, and you're in that prayer, Pray it, Lord Jesus, I accept what you did for me. I accept your salvation. Come in my heart today, Jesus. Save me so I can be with you forever. 
Amen. Amen. You know, friends, I'll never forget the day I did this. What peace in knowing I've been forgiven. And I know that if you prayed that prayer, you feel the same thing in your heart, deliverance. Well, there's my address. Will you please write and let me know. I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to hear from you. And now, whoa, 10 days left on this wonderful, wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impe Prophecy Bible. It's all in here. Take a look, please, at the promo. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopee Ministries. Dr. Vanopee has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopee used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Friends, you know, we're starting a new year. This would be so great for any occasion, as our announcer mentioned on that promo. And I'm going to be sending you this gift yet, Prophetic Verses of the Bible Handbook by Jack Van Impey. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. And oh, what a treasure it is. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rex Seller. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Do not put it off. There's the 800 number in the RC address. Please, please, really call us. We want you to have this wonderful Prophecy Bible. There's none like it. And my gift, Prophetic Verses of the Bible Handbook. So please, write to me or call. I want to get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. You know, I want to just say something here at the end. So many of us are facing the new year. And I want to tell you how you can really, really have a happy year. Number one, have Christ in your heart. But number two, walk with the Lord. You know, we talk about exercise all the time. Walk with the Lord. And if you have trouble sleeping, we need to sleep good at night. Can't sleep, I've quoted this before. Don't count sheep, talk with the shepherd. How wonderful it is to talk with him and to walk with him. I trust that you will do this every single day in the new year. We together, don't we, Jack? Wish them a very, very happy and blessed new year ahead. I guarantee if you walk with the Lord, you talk with the Lord, you're going to have a happy new year. We we'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.